Hey guys, and welcome back to Go Menards. My name is Joe Barlow, and today I've got another project deconstruction for you. This week, we're gonna be taking a look at how I made a photon beam from Captain Marvel. Last week, we did the test rack weapon. If you missed that, be sure to catch up. There'll be a playlist somewhere. Also, if you wanna watch these before the deconstructions are made here on YouTube, then be sure to follow me over on Instagram where I am releasing these. Link will be in the description. If you missed it, here is that video, and I'll see you at the end of this one. So let's take a look at the shots that I used as a reference. Now this is a scene from Captain Marvel where she blows up a jukebox with her photon beam to prove that she's not an alien to Nick Fury. Uh, we can see straight away that this sort of energy glows up from sort of inside of her hand. It's kind of like when you shine a torch um, through your skin, sort of through your hand, and you, you get that sort of sub-level. You can sort of see a little bit of the inside, but not everything, and uh, the light is bursting through before it finally does burst through and you get this big energy beam this big sort of light flare you've got orbs going on around here and you've got that energy beam shooting off screen it does uh, blow up the jukebox in the next shot there loads of sparks loads of energy um absolute chaos and that's what we're going to try and recreate today um i did look at some other shots from uh, from the film sort of more when she powers up completely and uh, she's got sort of a wavy energy around her, and we'll try and do some of that as well, but mostly something like this. So here we are in After Effects, and uh, we'll just take a quick look at the base footage first. Today, we've got me acting out, looking at my hand like I've never seen a hand before, and then uh, reaching out, and that's gonna be where the energy sort of pours out of my, uh, my fist, and goes off shot before, you know, disappearing and, uh, me being confused of what, what's happened. I don't know what's going on here. And you'll notice um, as I play this through that I've got a bit of a red light going on in the background. That's just me off shot, just turning a light on. Um, and I did this because uh, it's always a good idea to build elements in the real world that will help sell the effect. So if you've got a, a beam of light going on or some sort of glowing, add some light in. If you've got uh, someone going really fast or throwing like a fireball or energy ball or something then add a fan on them add some sort of environmental interaction um, so that's what we've got now the first thing I did was create a rotoscope of my uh, of my arm there it's quite visible here and I did this to um, attach a lot of the effects to I've, I've got some fractals and some energies that I want to sort of sit behind or on top um, so I needed a rotoscope of that. Uh, so that's that, that was the first thing I did. And, and it's quite a good one, it's quite clean. After Effects' rotoscoping has really improved um, over the last sort of year or two. So it's something I'm using more and more of. I don't, I don't really fall back on green screen as much as I used to. I just think, oh, I'll just rotoscope it. So now I've got my rotoscope, what I wanna do is build layers of energy and glows to sort of isolate my arm having this power. Now I did this to start with by taking my rotoscope and adding a find edges to the rotoscope and inverting it. So you get this uh, this hand. So when, when you first put find edges on it, it, it looks like this, but when you invert it, you get this black and white rather than this white and black. And uh, this gives me a nice edge. Now, if I go back over to my other composition, I've taken that edge, I've added a bunch of glows onto it. And as you can see, I've got this edge glow, which is fantastic for what I want. Now I've also added a mask, so it's only at the top of my hand, and uh, I've feathered it slightly, so it actually sort of fades out the lower it gets on my arm, which makes this area look like it's uh, pretty intense. And here it is, it just comes on, and I sort of try to match the glow of the background, um, and that's the very first thing I did to, to achieve this shot, and already it looks pretty decent. So the next layer I applied to myself was this sort of in-arm energy. We've got that exterior glow, we want some energy going over the top. Now, I've built this with some fractal noise, some toner and a vector blur. Um, just to create this pattern inside the arm and I've used a uh, rotoscope there and an alpha mat just to, uh, just to sort of isolate that area. Now, I've also uh, added a linear dodge to this and that's just to help that sort of like sub-level lighting. Some bits are really bright, some bits are a bit darker 
and um, it helps build those sub levels um, like we saw in the reference footage. So here we go, it's all rendered in and we've got it sort of all building up before the release happens and I've just got it fading out there because that's where it's meant to be pouring out of my hand uh, just before the glow leaves my hand. So this is the basis of all of the energy. Now as well as the interior fractal and the exterior glow to the fist, I also wanted some energy flowing around it. It's something we see in a lot of the other shots in the film, but not necessarily the shot we're referencing. Um, but I thought it'd be cool to add it, so what I did, I took the rotoscope again, added a bunch of energy and uh, coloured it in, and I ended up with this cool energy flowing around the, the hand. So all this energy sits behind my hand, um, so it's not necessarily on top of, but it's sort of around, and because of those glows, it looks like it's sort of feeding from that. I also did go ahead and add a little bit on top of the hand as well, so it all sort of fits together nicely. Now this was the basis of all of the energy I wanted to sort of build up onto my hand and around my hand uh, and I thought the next thing I needed to do was add some light into my face to make it look like that glow was literally in my face. I mean my fist is that close you'd think there'd be some sort of interaction. So what I did there was just add some, uh, some light sweeps um, onto a rotoscope part of my face and if we just solo this you can sort of see there's the rotoscope and the light sweep just sits on the side there. This animates in nicely, so it slowly builds up, sort of, as the glow builds in. And uh, it's pretty, it gets pretty bright. I wasn't too worried about that because I was also gonna add some flares to my eyes, which uh, I did towards the end. And that does also brighten up my face quite a lot. I had some glows around my sort of uh, pupils there as well. And these all sort of came into play as the charge came up. My eyes, my hand, everything started to sort of show itself. At this stage, I was pretty happy with everything that I've got. And the next thing I wanted to do was, of course, build that energy beam flowing out of my hand. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just turn off everything I've just turned on. Uh, and we'll just talk you through the, uh, the energy beam leaving my hand. So the first thing I did to create that energy beam was of course create some sort of flow. Now I just duplicated um, this energy throw uh, animation over and over again just to sort of make it look like it's um, one continuous beam. And I dropped that on top of my footage. I created two layers of it, slightly, uh, slightly delayed, colored one of them blue and one of them orange. And that matches that energy that was around the arm uh, in the earlier bit of the shot. Now I thought this looked okay, but I thought it was missing um, a lot more power. It sort of just looks like steam coming out my hand at the moment. I wanted like a beam of something. And if you want a beam in After Effects, um, you can of course make a beam or go to Saber. Saber is really good for this sort of thing. I uh, popped it onto Nebula this time. I then added a directional blur and a turbulent displace as well. Uh, so this is what the Nebula looks like before doing that to it. And this just creates this uh, thing, <laughs> it's the best way I could describe it. And on top of that energy throw that we've already got, it just sort of paints in the middle of that a little bit nicer for me. So now that we've got the middle painted in, the next thing I, I focused on really was the way it leaves the hand. I didn't like that it sort of just appears from nowhere. Obviously when the hand's glowing and that, that glow fades down my hand, it sort of helps uh, push the effect out. But I thought maybe we need something else here. So I added another energy leak. And this sort of gives the uh, idea that as I punch the air, it sort of explodes from me and sort of flows out a little bit more than it did before. I then went ahead and added this sort of extra glow as well, uh, using an optical flare. And, and that just sort of hides quite a bit of it really. It sort of charges up as it comes out of me. And that, was uh, quite nice for the uh, energy beam. You might remember um, from the reference shot, there was sort of a, a blue, then a purple. I've sort of got that here. It has stayed a bit more orange. I, I was more of a fan of the two colors there. Um, so we're not trying to exactly replicate, just sort of closely <laughs> replicate. And I was happy with uh, what we got, so I, I sort of left it as that. So we also added these two flares here. Now, you'll see as the beam sort of charges up, these orbs come in. Now this is something that was in the reference shot. There was there was these uh, this camera dirt, so I, uh, I made sure to add some of those in, um, 
and then this flare here is uh, this little light beam here, this sort of streak, and it just adds to that um, overwhelmingness of light when you've got little things like that in there. So the only other thing on my timeline that I've not yet looked over is a couple of other layers here. Now I added in these hits from uh, Video Copilot's Action Essentials, I think it is, and they just sort of sit here uh, to add some sparks as it goes off shot to make it look like maybe I hit something. Um, I just wanted to sort of reference the fact that, you know, there's a jukebox in the reference shot and maybe I've hit something here. It doesn't show up too much, but it, it doesn't hurt to have it in. So once all of our layers are turned back on and they're working in unity together, the final thing I wanted to add was a heat distortion. Now this, of course, like the previous one, bends the, uh, bends the environment around it and, and that makes this look like a, a red hot energy uh, beam rather than just some sort of glowy light that's coming out of my hand. So here's the effect when it's complete. We've got that nice buildup of energy at the beginning and then the photon beam blasting out of my hand and it sort of pours uh, right out of my arm there. So you can sort of see it flowing from one side to the other and then finally that light just sort of coming down and, uh, and finishing off the, uh, the action. Now I've also added um, a camera shake in here as it flows uh, out of my hand and also uh, I've created some uh, lens leaks just to sort of happen around the edge. Um, if you want to see how to make those I have a tutorial on my channel somewhere um, and also you can see that, um, that heat distortion happening as it sort of wiggles past my computer, especially in this spot here, you can sort of see it there. And that's that, uh, that energy firing out of my hand rather than that light that I was on about before. So that's the effect. Let's take one last look at it. And there you go, that was the photon beam from Captain Marvel. Remember, if you wanna see these before I do the deconstructions, then do be sure to follow me over on Instagram. The link is in the description. Uh, until then though, that's two down, many more to go. I'll see you next time, goodbye.